Without objection, so ordered. The chair recognizes himself to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute. The clerk will please report the amendment. An amendment in the nature of a substitute offered to H.R. 4502, offered by Mr. Comer of Kentucky. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read, and the substitute will be considered as original text for the purposes of further amendment. I recognize myself for five minutes for a statement on the bill and the amendment. The federal government relies on cybersecurity professionals to protect personally identifiable information, defend against cyber threats, and build secure government technology. To ensure this work is done effectively, the federal government desperately needs to hire more cybersecurity experts. For many cybersecurity jobs, however, the Office of Personnel Management requires applicants to have achieved a certain level of education to even be considered for the role. This prevents the government from hiring some of the best and brightest cybersecurity professionals. Many experts that have the right technical skills and experience but federal hiring managers are not allowed to consider them because they lack a formal college degree. Representative Nancy Mace's simple bill ensures that the federal government can hire any qualified cybersecurity professional as long as they have the right knowledge and skills, even if they do not have a fancy degree. I urge my colleagues to support this timely, necessary, and bipartisan bill, and I thank Nancy Mace, Chairwoman of the Subcommittee on Cybersecurity Information and Technology and Government Innovation, for bringing this important reform bill to the full committee's consideration. I now recognize the bill's sponsor for her remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for bringing this, uh, this bill forward today and Ranking Member Raskin as well. I also want to thank my colleague across the aisle, Congresswoman Porter from California, for her partnership on H.R. 4502, the Modernizing Acquisition of Cybersecurity Experts Act. This bill solves a simple problem. You can't deem one applicant more qualified for a federal cybersecurity job just because he or she has a degree in underwater basket weaving. Um, and uh, I, I actually have some experience in this. I have a family member who just turned 22. He started uh, his career in computer engineering and programming at the age of 16 when he took a coding camp one summer. And because of dual enrollment, he was actually able to work full time starting at the age of 16 as a programmer. He just turned 22. He owns his own home, has a car, getting ready to buy another one. He knows more about technology and programming than any other member of Congress. And he makes as much or more money than I do at 22. And so we have some remarkable young people coming through this generation uh, that have great talent because they've been around technology their entire life and shouldn't be prevented from using those talents in the federal IT workforce. And so uh, this is an opportunity for us to work together. There's a shortage of over 700,000 cybersecurity professionals in the public and private sector. People who don't attend or finish college are often barred from consideration for jobs in this field when really they shouldn't be. Uh, today, a brilliant computer whiz who drops out of Harvard for a year or two, like Bill Gates and other billionaires, uh, would stand little chance of securing a federal job in IT and cybersecurity. And we should be welcoming that kind of talent in any way, shape, or form we can. While the cyber workforce is crucial to our national security, it's graying rapidly. According to a report issued last year, there are five times as many cybersecurity workers over the age of 55 as there are under the age of 30. Only one in 16 federal cybersecurity workers are actually under the age of 30. So this bill prohibits mandatory degree requirements for federal cybersecurity jobs unless those credentials are legally required to perform the duties of the position, which is rarely the case. Even entry-level positions require a four-year degree in many cases uh, with regards to these positions. Some of these young people literally have the skills to hack into critical federal IT systems, but they can't get their foot in the door for employment at federal agencies or at the same agency. So these, there are many unnecessary degree barriers that we are lifting today with this piece of legislation. Over the past few years, we've seen leaders from both parties at all levels of government rolling back degree requirements resulting in greater economic opportunity for all Americans. Even many large companies today have done away with degree requirements. Uh, states are doing the same thing. And I have said many times, if we only we can run the government like a business is run, we would save the taxpayers so much money and be so much more efficient, and this is an opportunity to do that today. 
There is nothing more bipartisan than a bill that codifies a Trump-era executive order that's been maintained by the Biden administration. And we have colleagues on both sides of the aisle supporting the bill today. I especially, again, want to thank Representative Katie Porter of California for her support as an original co-sponsor of H.R. 4502. The bill is also endorsed by the Alliance for digital innovation whose member companies include Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and others engaged in federal and private sector cybersecurity. And we look forward to the committee's careful consideration of this very important legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield back. General Lady yields back. I urge all my colleagues to support this bill. I now yield to the ranking member for his statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to uh, commend um, our distinguished colleague, Nancy Mace, uh, and um, Katie Porter from California for introducing uh, the Modernizing the Acquisition of Cybersecurity Experts Act, um, which will indeed eliminate the requirement that a Bachelor of Arts or Sciences degree uh, must be a prerequisite to federal hiring in qualifying cybersecurity-related positions. Uh, the bill addresses the big shortage of cybersecurity workers for a growing number of relevant jobs. According to one recent study, the number of unfilled cybersecurity positions in the U.S. rose to over 410,000, up 9% over last year. Uh, this gap in uh, the cybersecurity workforce continues to grow, and this bill is uh, a smart and uh, timely attempt to meet this rising uh, demand. It's similar to an executive order that was issued by the previous administration and has been maintained by the Biden administration, and I support it uh, wholeheartedly, and I'd like to recognize the Democratic co-sponsor, Ms. Porter. Thank you very much. Um, I want to start by thanking Representative Mace for her leadership, for her advocacy, and for her partnership. Look, government employees should be the best in the business. Taxpayers deserve nothing less from the people that they employ. But how do we get the best in our federal jobs? Just like in any market, it all comes down to one thing, fostering competition. When I hire staffers to represent California's 47th Congressional District, I write job descriptions that describe exactly what work that person will need to accomplish. Then I let candidates compete on who best demonstrates those skills. The beauty of that competition is that there isn't just one credential or one requirement that guarantees someone will get the job. Sometimes I've had great staffers who have law degrees. They were successful in writing and analyzing policy because their education prepared them for it. Other times, I've had great policy staff who had no particular degree or education. They were successful because they spent years working on Capitol Hill or had other deep policy experience gained from being in the workforce. If I thought excelling in a government job always came down to one credential or one life experience, I would have missed out on some great employees, and more importantly, taxpayers would have missed out. No part of the federal government should disqualify an individual from competing for a federal job based on whether they have one type of educational credential. We're only going to find out who's best to fill a role if we let all qualified candidates show us all their qualifications. Today, I'm happy to partner with Congresswoman Mace on legislation to allow just this kind of competition when it comes to our federal cybersecurity jobs. Just like I've employed great policy professionals with and without law degrees, there's not one type of educational experience that's always going to make a cybersecurity professional the best of the best. I'm a former professor, and I know that a lot of people will learn skills in college programs that prepare them to be a federal cybersecurity professional. At the same time, I also know that college isn't always affordable and accessible for everybody, and the reality is that many people gain the skills necessary to flourish and succeed at federal cybersecurity jobs as part of other experiences, including military service or training and apprenticeship programs. The door needs to be open to both kinds of qualified candidates, those with or without a degree. And the federal government should be able to pick who is most prepared to do the job based on a holistic view of the candidates. The Modernizing the Acquisition of Cybersecurity Experts Act stops the federal government from ruling out people without a specific educational credential. Instead, it lets all qualified applicants compete, and it gives the federal government more choices. 
We should be able to agree to advance this bill regardless of party. As my colleague, Congresswoman May said, um, there's very little as bipartisan as an executive order issued under President Trump that President Biden has chosen to keep in place, to keep on the books. This is a policy that is working under administrations of both parties to make our government more successful, and now we need in Congress to do our job to make it permanent as a law. I urge all Democrats and Republicans on the committee to support this bill. We can only hire the best federal cybersecurity professionals when we've had the chance to consider all the qualified options. And the modernizing the acquisition of cybersecurity experts will give us this chance. I'm proud to support Representative Mace's bill, and I thank her for the opportunity to co-lead, and I yield back. Gentlelady yields back. Do any other members wish to be heard? All right, the question is now on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The question is now on favorably reporting H.R. 4502 as amended. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the bill Mr. is ordered. Mr. Chair, I request a recorded vote. 